going on everybody my name is Tomas and today I'm going to be unboxing the Google Nexus 7 made by Asus uh, my awesome wife got this for me for Christmas and I thought I would try my hand at making better unboxings in a better resolution I've started using a DSLR so hopefully I can evolve my channel into something more pleasurable for you to watch without further ado let's get into this thing right off the bat you see the tablet wrapped in its awesome plastic um, we're gonna put this off to the side and go through the box before uh, we dig into the actual tablet itself and if you've watched any unboxings in the past you know the drill um, you basically get some documentation um, micro USB cable and the wall charger you might get lucky if you bought a Samsung tablet or whatnot and get a set of headphones in addition to all this junk but recently I've noticed quite a disturbing trend where manufacturers are not including headsets anymore um, HTC for example used to give you earbuds but not anymore it's not like I would use them, but it would still be nice to have a headset included in the purchase of your, your new tablet. Let's take a look at the tablet itself. On the left side, you'll see some sort of dock connector, which uh, Google hasn't taken advantage of yet. Down the left side, it's pretty clean. Up top, right here, is where you'll see the microphone. Um, there is no rear-facing camera on this tablet. So if you're looking for a tablet that'll be able to um, take pictures or video, this probably wouldn't be the solution for you. Uh, on top you'll see the power button and volume rocker. Down here you'll see the speaker, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which I believe is um, capable of utilizing headphones with the microphone. The back of this tablet has a really nice texture to it. Uh, as you can see, it's not a fingerprint magnet, and I think that this backing would uh, deter against any kind of minor scratches. As we turn the tablet around, you can see the 1.2 megapixel front facing camera and right next to that is a, a light sensor. This 7 inch tablet rocks scratch resistant corning glass, which isn't Gorilla Glass, but I guess it's just as good. Uh, in addition to that, it's a backlit IPS display, which we'll get into more when I actually turn this tablet on. Okay, so now let's zoom out a little bit and take a quick walk around the tablet itself. On this side, you'll see the dock connector, which will be interesting to see what Google does with it. Down at the bottom, you're going to see the headphone jack and the micro USB, which I forgot to mention earlier in the video. From there, we move up to the speaker, which I'm not too fond of because of its placement. Um, then the microphone and on to the power button and volume rocker. And that concludes the back of it. Alright, so let's turn this thing on and get a quick look at its 1280 by 800 HD display with 216 PPI, which to me personally is plenty. This HD display looks outstanding, and for the cost of this tablet in total, completely worth it. Okay, so out of the box, this ships with Jelly Bean 4.1.2, and I tried to think of some things that I considered a quick look. Things that I considered important. If I were in the market for a tablet that didn't take a big chunk out of my wallet, I would want to know the actual capacity because stated capacities are not actual capacities. Thankfully, this comes with 27.58 gigabytes of usable space. And also the Wi-Fi speeds. I have decent Wi-Fi here in my home, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm not a big tablet gamer, so I won't be taking a look at Quadrant Scores or Geekbench simply because I haven't purchased Geekbench and I don't think I will because benchmarking is not that important to me. I'm more geared towards actual use and how the device or whatever I'm looking at performs while I'm using it. I will go out on a limb and say the Tegra 3 processor that's inside of this thing will probably handle any and all games that you throw at it. I don't have the greatest internet, but this is getting uh, about 11 down and about 6 up. Almost about as soon as I turn this thing on, Google pushed the 4.2.1 Jelly Bean update out to me, and I updated, and I couldn't be happier. If you're looking for a tablet that isn't going to cost you an arm and a leg, this is the one for you. Definitely. In addition to that, it's lightweight, and its form factor are probably... The most luring thing about it to me. I've avoided the iPad mini because of cost, processor, and display. With that said, the screen resolution on this thing isn't bad at all. The Tegra 3 is a beast and the cost is relatively cheap. I'm gonna go ahead and say it's one of the premier tablets out there. It also helps that I'm already ingrained in the Google ecosystem so it makes it easy for me to move into a tablet like this. And that's another thing, if you're ingrained in the Apple ecosystem, this isn't going to work. I would say go ahead and go for the iPad mini or the iPad. All in all, I really like this tablet. I find myself using this far more than I do my third gen 
Retina iPad. So if you're in the market, I would say go ahead and go for it. All right, that about does it for me. Thanks for taking the time to watch my video, and I hope you're all doing well.